Okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, anyways, so I born in Berlin, grew up near Frankfurt, um, actually between Frankfurt and Wiesbaden. Um, I, at the time I grew up, the Frankfurt airport was the biggest airport in the country, and I think it still is. And I was always fascinated by anything that, uh, that man made, anything man made that is flying. Um, mo mostly airplanes. I mean, <laughs> um, but um, at the time I grew up, there was no LASIK and my eyes weren't good enough. So I couldn't, I couldn't become a pilot. And um, really engineering was my second choice um, and not, not my first choice. I would have been a pilot otherwise and you would have probably found me at some whatever flight or um, shuttling back and forth if uh, my eyes weren't um, not good enough for this. And so I, I started going um, to Berlin, back to Berlin, because most of my family is, uh, is still in Berlin, um, and went to uh, Technical University of Berlin for um, because they had a, a fairly good aerospace uh, faculty, um, and uh, and I did that basically. I did drift a little bit in in, in college. I um, did a little bit of airplanes, um, and then I actually found it more interesting to look at satellites. Um, I found programming and, and space just more interesting than um, airplane designs. And I, I, I joined a project called TubeSat, um, which is a satellite project. And um, I basically restarted my, um, my uh, university studies completely with um, space stuff. Um, and what I, like, I liked on the project is in particular, it had a strong focus on building actual hardware and, um, and, and programming it and, and make it actually work. And I really enjoyed that. I did build a, uh, I remember I, I built a controller for spacecraft attitude control um, out of um, it's electronics. So um, soldered it together. And I also built a momentum wheel um, with an, a, a DC, DC motor um, and uh, built the electronics around that. So um, I thought it was pretty hands-on. And then post-college, I found out that the Bremen University also worked on a satellite um, called Bremsat. And um, Bremsat was uh, pretty well funded at the time. It was run from um, CARM, uh, the Center of Applied Space Technology and Microgravity. Uh, I almost <laughs> forgot the long name. Um, and it had science experiments on there. And uh, it was actually a corporation um, with OHB, um, and at the time, OHB was a small company across the street. Um, I think they had maybe 100 people, maybe 150 people. So um, that's been that's been a long time ago. Um, actually, it was '89, so that puts it at well, I don't know, a lot of our uh, years. Um, so, anyways, I worked in Bremen. Um, I before that. Even I found the motion of a satellite that has a wheel inside um, and the spinning fascinating. And so I started, I started programming a model of that, basically a dynamics model. And then I, I, I basically added a trajectory module and I did more environmental models. I added a geomagnetic model, atmosphere. Basically what I did is I built, I built a live support system for a satellite. Um, and then when we tested the satellite, actually, we, we used that software to tell the satellite what it's doing or what, how the environment looks. And I, I basically developed a hardware in the loop system without even knowing what a hardware in the loop test is. Um, and and it, it's, 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 a, it's a teachingly very important to have a test like that because it lets you test everything that you cannot test otherwise. Um, we might come back to that, but um, it's just something that I, I, um, I learned, you know, in Bremen and in, uh, in, in this particular project that um, it's super important to have something like that. If you can not test something on the ground, then you need to simulate it and, uh, and test it there. Um, so, but Bremsat flew in 1993 um, oh, almost almost thirty years ago, and um, it was actually it was actually a great success. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't completely technically successful. There were like little things that didn't work, 
one of the sensors didn't work, but we worked around it. Um, and, and it was overall considered, you know, it was a successful satellite in Germany and was built at the university by, well, it was built at the university um, together with OHB at a small, a small company that uh, was basically a startup at the time. And, um, and it showed that you could do this for relatively um, small amount of money at the time. And that was, that was really, um, it was really a, a new thing. And uh, like I said, it was a great success. Uh, but uh, success is a little bit, it's a lousy teacher. Um, that's actually a quote from, um, from Bill Gates. Um, and, uh, and I get back to this later by success as a lousy teacher. <laughs> Um, I did. I did learn, however, how to build things in a startup environment. Uh, Tom was really a startup environment. OHP was pretty close to that too, and um, we basically were, we, we were focused on building things, and uh, um, there was very little bureaucracy, and um, and we, we of course we also got a lot of things done because of that. Um, I continued a few more years at SARM. Um, I finished my PhD. I didn't really plan to have a PhD in the beginning. Um, I was just coming over for Poemsat for the project. Um, but then I realized when I'm when you're seven years or six years at the university and you have nothing to show for, so to speak, yeah, no title, then um, I was thinking the uh, German the European industry might look at that and go, well, he just spent time at university, he didn't do anything. And so I felt, I felt compelled to actually do a PhD. Um, and Bremsa gave enough data to actually do that. And so I just basically did that at the very end. Um, and, um, and so I finished my PhD and then I got, a, I got a, an offer to um, join a small company here in Los Angeles. The, uh, the company was called Microcosm, and and it it really was a um, an adventure at the beginning. It was um, they basically talked to me and said, "Hey, uh, we we got really this nice project for you over here, and um, we can give you a visa for two years. Do you want to come over and 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 live here? We we, we, we help you with the housing, and we help you uh, getting around in LA. And 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 at that time." Um, I found my wife in Bremen. Um, we decided to um, to do that just as an adventure, and so we moved over to uh, to Los Angeles. It's a it's a small step from Bremen to Los Angeles. <laughs> um, Los Angeles uh, is 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 um, a pretty big big town, of forty million people, so um, <coughs> roughly the size of Netherlands. One second. But um, it certainly was an adventure. Um, I stayed five years at, uh, at Microcosm and then I ran into this guy <coughs> at a rocket, um, an amateur rocket uh, weekend in Mojave, um, the desert outside Los Angeles. And um, that's where I met Elon Musk. And, um, and we just talked a little bit, uh, shook hands and, um, and that was it um, for the time. And then he called me back, um, I wanna say, maybe a couple of weeks later, maybe three, four weeks later. And, um, and he asked me if I'd be interested in, um, in working at a startup um, that he, he is funding and uh, he wanted to call it SpaceX. And I just, I pretty quickly said, yes, absolutely. I'd be, I'd be excited to do this. And he, he said that his goal was to, you know, build a rocket and, uh, <coughs> basically uh, develop um, technologies to make um, humanity interplanetary. And I thought that was a pretty lofty goal, but um, he, uh, he had a lot of money at the time already, um, at least for, 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 for me, that was a, a, just a, an astounding number. He wanted to invest a hundred million into the company. And I thought, wow, okay, this, uh, this is probably good enough for three years. So, so let's just do this. Um, and that's how I joined, uh, joined SpaceX. I'm um, quick go back to, uh, to Bremsat. Bremsat was actually launched on the shuttle. And um, the, the good part of the shuttle, so I can't really show this, huh? I have no mouse. 
Uh, you see the satellite hop coming out there out of the um, a, a container. And the, the good part of the shuttle is you have you get a picture of your satellite. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, and it it showed it, sh it also showed that the satellite was rotating the right way and, and everything was good. It was pretty cool. Um, the there's another story to this. Um, the person who deployed the satellite um, was uh, was a guy named Charlie Bolden, and I met him earlier in Houston, and and we talked about how to set out how to deploy the satellite, and uh, Charlie Bolden became the administrator for NASA, and uh, and 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 we're still friends, so it's a really it's a really good story. Um, he's not the administrator anymore, but he was the administrator for a fair amount of uh, years, I think uh, eight years or so. Anyways, um, moving on to SpaceX. Um, so I joined SpaceX um, as the fourth technical member. And um, before that, there was Elon Musk, obviously. Uh, Tom Mueller was a propulsion VP. And Chris Thompson was the structure VP. And then I joined. Um, I should probably mention two people post after me too. And um, um, there was Tim Bowser, who was the VP of launch and, uh, and a really good friend. Um, and then Gwyn Shotwell, who um, became president, is also a good friend. Uh, Gwyn actually worked with me um, at, uh, at Microcosm. So she was my boss at uh, Microcosm and, um, and became a boss at SpaceX. Um, in one sentence, SpaceX developed Falcon 1, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Rapid Reusability, Cargo Dragon, Crew Dragon, five launch sites, Starlink, the largest constellation in the world, and Starship in the about 20 years that followed um, yeah, after, after I joined. Um, that's quite, it's quite impressive, actually. If I just, I don't always look at that this way, but... Um, um, it's, it's a lot. And it's estimated um, to be worth, um, well, the billion in English is the milliarde in German. And so I just decided to say it's a hundred billion or, or, or 110 to the power of nine um, dollars um, is the estimated worth. And it, it dominates the world's launch market. Uh, I'd like to hear any dissenting opinions on that. Um, maybe later. But um, there's, there's two really good references. Um, one of them is a, um, a Netflix um, documentary that came out um, earlier this month. Um, it's called Return to Space. Um, it features Elon and actually me quite a bit too. And, um, and it's, uh, it's really well done by um, two film producers that I value very much, uh, Chai Vasahili. Um, and Jimmy Chin. Um, Jimmy Chin is, is a guy who skied um, Mount Everest not once but twice and uh, I have deep respect uh, for both of them. They just make great, great films. Um, yeah. And then the second reference is uh, Liftoff, um, this book, and uh, it's written by Eric Berger. Eric Berger is a, um, a, a really fair, accurate and um, uh, and a, a, a journalist who understands space very well and um, tries to basically explain things from from all angles. And I, I really uh, value his his contributions. Both, I mean, uh, both books like like Liftoff and 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 and, and others, but also his his articles at um, Ars Technica, I think, are uh, really well thought out. Okay, that's uh, SpaceX. Um, my role changed a lot at SpaceX. I started as the vice president of Yonix, and then I moved on. I became launch chief engineer, uh, which is a, a role. It's not a title, and I, I did that a lot. Uh, ended up as the uh, VP for build and flight reliability, and um, my responsibility or what I, I owned the risk to launch. And uh, I focused initially at building a team that never really went away, and, uh, and I worked... Uh, technically as part of the development team. And then later on, um, I focused more on problem solving, uh, problem solving and, and it's both like with respect to work processes, operations and flight data. My, my goal was to improve reliability and production cost. Um, two statements, just reusability is both good and bad for reliability. 
um, on one side, you use the device over and over again, so you wear it out, but you learn so much by looking at the whatever your product is when you reuse it, um, it outweighs the um, the wear the wear and tear on the on the on the vehicle. So I fundamentally think that reusability is actually the game changer that puts SpaceX where it is right now, uh, and that's dominating the market. Mm -hmm. um, the basically. Uh, yeah, that, that what the bottom line of that is the first company making reuse, reusability work in get complete grants, but also get exciting discounts on your favorite snacks and drinks and groceries and get it delivered. Can we uh, mute the other person? Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, it's okay, thank you. Um, okay, I also learned space is hard. Um, three failures to get to orbit the Falcon 1 was a um, uh, very difficult difficult time. Uh, there were two major anomalies with Falcon 9, multiple landing failures um, and the Dragon static fire failure. Um, down there, you see some pictures. I was actually launch chief engineer for the, um, the left run uh, CS7. And I remember that I, I looked down for a second and I looked up and looked, tried to find the vehicle because it was gone. Um, so I, I worked on all these anomalies and, um, and, and I learned a couple of things. One of them is don't give up, keep improving your product until it's the safest in the world. And, and also in some cases, it's, it's actually faster to accept the higher risk than to, to analyze it to death. Um, nothing replaces testing anyways and, and hard work. Um, okay, I want to just, I just have a few more lines until we get into the questions. Um, I had like a couple of startup lessons too. Um, maybe just a few. Um, one thing that I found really important is that you allow participation and the company growth. And that, that means basically equity, which means company stock. That is something that, in my opinion, um, needs to be brought to Germany too. And it does exist in Germany, but it's difficult. It's really, really difficult. Uh, communication is key um, in a company. Gravity is a virtue. And um, um, Elon is famous for having usually two letter email answers and it's either okay or no. Um, and the shorter the request is, the uh, easier it is to get it through. Flexibility is key. You got to change your direction if, you, if you're a startup. Clear mission with a rationale um, is super important. And um, then the last line is actually um, one thing that I found really hard is working with people. Um, it's really hard to learn how to do a good interview and, and um, the, the human side of the business. As an, as an engineer, you learn a lot of the technical side, but the human side is there. And it's just something that is uh, very difficult to learn. Um, that's pretty much what I had. Um, I have a couple of pictures here. Um, yeah, these are all basically on the left side is um, um, live on in Kwajalein. That's where we tested out Falcon One. It's a it's a remote island in the Marshall in the Marshall Islands. If you find it on the map, then you actually know the geography really well. Um, the middle one is um, me in the launch control center. This is the exact same launch control center for um, Apollo shuttle. All big uh, NASA missions um, were controlled from this control center. Um, and I think that mission is actually inspiration for. Um, on the right side is me at the landing site after the first booster on, uh, at, at Cape Canaveral landed. That was uh, flight 921. And um, I think the, the mission was OPCOM. Very important, uh, important uh, flight. And this is what I do privately. I have a family and uh, hang out with them. Um, I do like skiing. I do like the mountains. I do like eating a good German bread in an airplane that I fly myself and actually build myself. Um, so this basically um, puts it together. And that's all I had in terms of talking about myself. <laughs>